Hello guys, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day. So today I'm going to do a video on potential window super capacitor. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to answer one of the question from the viewer on how to determine the potential window on super capacitor application. So throughout this presentation and short video, we will learn about the definition and the case study and also some tips and tricks. Okay, let's see why I did this video because one of the viewer, which is Nishan S, asking about in my CV potential window is 0 0.4 to 1.2 volt. So GCD should achieve 1.2 volt or 1.2 to 0 0.4. So it is a three electrode setup. So basically, in general, to answer your question, if your CV potential window from 0 0.4 to 1.2 volt, your GCD should follow the same potential window from 0 0.4 to 1.2 volt. But I'm a little bit curious if you are doing supercapacitor, why you start from 0 0.4 instead start from uh, instead start from 0 because it is a normal supercapacitor, we start from 0 to positive potential or 0 to negative potential. If you are dealing with symmetric supercapacitor, then it is wise to start, for example, from negative potential window to positive. For example, we start from negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 volt, if in case of symmetrical supercapacitor. But maybe your material only can achieve from 0 0.4 to 1.2 volt. Yeah, it's okay. You can use, if your CV from that potential, from your GCD also, you can use that potential. So, uh, upon the definition, the potential window of a supercapacitor defines the voltage range within which the device can effectively and safely operate. It represents the limits that your device can actually achieve or not. Typically, it's specified as a maximum or minimum voltage. So, in your case, from 0 0.4 to 1.2 volts means your minimum is 0 0.4 your maximum voltage is 1.2 volt. So depend on your device, the capability to achieve minimum and also maximum voltage. So for supercapacitor, you should handling inside the potential window because we want to avoid overcharging or over depleted of your material because it can, if you charge more than the potential window that your device can achieve, it can deplete your device. For example, in this example, they give from 0 to 3 volt. If you're charging more than 3 volts, means your sample will be cracking and your material will be destroyed and also your specific capacity will be decreased. So be careful on determining the potential window. Okay, this is the case study number one where this uh, is cyclic voltammetry and the other one is GCD, galvanostatic charge discharge. What I want to highlight is if your potential window from CV analysis from 0 to 0 0.5 volt for GCD, it should follow from 0 to 0 0.5 volt. It is a normal condition. The potential window must be remain the same. Okay, there's case number two, when you have a larger potential windows, especially for the device from 0 to 1.5 volt, for your GCD also should follow from 0 to 1.5 volt. And you also can do an analysis, which is uh, determining the ability of your material to achieve certain potential window. So this, the left-hand side analysis, we call that cyclic voltammetry at different potential window to see whether your device can achieve certain potential window or not. And for GCD also the same, to see how much your potential window can be achieved, you can run GCD at different potential window by right. The theoretical is the CV and GCD, the potential window should be the same. And last but not least is the case study number three, whereby you experience the negative potential window from negative 0 0.5 to positive 0 0.5 volt. So this, when you are dealing with symmetrical supercapacitor, so you're dealing with this kind of range of potential window. Again, when you are dealing from negative to positive, the GCD also should follow as you can see from the right hand side, the GCD potential window start from negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 volt. So in the end, the tips and tricks by determining the potential window of your material, make sure the potential window is the same 
during cyclic voltammetry and also galvanostatic charge discharge. Number two, scan from a large potential window to small potential window. For example, when you study the positive electron, you can scan from zero volt to one volt or zero volt to two volt. Then you can minimize the potential window according to oxygen and hydrogen evolution. So number three, avoid oxygen and hydrogen evolution during cyclic voltammetry for accurate potential window. Number four, some sample only can retain the CV shape at low scan rates. When you are dealing with a lot of experience in battery type or yeah, most of the time is battery grade material. So battery grade or battery type material only can show the redox, obvious redox peaks at low scan rate. For example, scan rate 1 to maybe scan rate 10 or maybe 20 or less. So at higher scan rate, it is quite difficult for battery type material to show a good apparent of redox peaks. So be careful on that. So determining your scan rate also important when study the shape of your CV. Last but not least, some substrate might be difficult to have same potential window in CV and GCD. So when you are dealing with substrates like nickel form or foil or other substrates, different substrate might have different shape of CV and GCD and different substrate might have a difficulty to achieve the same potential window. For example, in CV, your potential window from 0 to 0 0.5, from GCD, it might be quite difficult to achieve 0 0.5. Maybe it can achieve until 0 0.45 volt. So if you refer from paper and channel, some of them regard a small, what we call that deviation from 0 to 0 0.5 volt only. But you can try to increase the mass loading of the material so the potential window might achieve to your desired potential window. I think that's all. Thank you very much.